Hey there, so you're studying for the CISSP exam and you've come across those abstract security terms, TCB, reference monitor, security kernel, and you're thinking, what on earth do these actually mean in the real world? I get it. When I first encountered these concepts, they felt like a bunch of theoretical jargon with no connection to reality. But here's the thing. These concepts are actually the foundation of how secure systems work and understanding them is crucial not just for passing the exam, but for being a great security professional. So let's break them down in a way that actually makes sense, using something we can all visualize, a medieval castle. Let's be honest. Most study materials throw these terms at you with dry, technical definitions that just don't stick. You're told that the TCB is the totality of protection mechanisms within a computer system, and the reference monitor is an abstract concept that mediates all accesses to objects. And you're left thinking, okay, but what does that actually look like? What's missing is the connection to something tangible. We need real-world analogies, clear connections between concepts, and most importantly, understanding why any of this actually matters. That's exactly what we're going to fix together. The Trusted Computing Base, or TCB, the Castle Keep. Imagine you're in a medieval castle. Right in the center, there's this massive, heavily fortified tower called the Keep. This is where the king lives, where the treasure is stored, and where the most important decisions are made. If enemies breach the keep, the castle is lost. Game over. That's exactly what the Trusted Computing Base, or TCB, is in computer security. It's the heart of the system, the collection of all the protection mechanisms that work together to enforce security policies. Just like the castle keep, it contains everything critical to security. Now here's the key point. Only the most trusted guards are allowed inside the keep. Similarly, in the TCB, only the most trusted components, hardware, firmware, and software, are included. The TCB isn't just one thing, it's the totality of all the protection mechanisms in the system. If someone breaches the TCB, like breaching the castle keep, then nothing else in the system can keep you safe. That's why the TCB is so crucial, and why we try to keep it as small as possible. Smaller means easier to verify and fewer potential vulnerabilities. Now, think about all the doors and gateways in that castle. Every time someone wants to go from one area to another, there's a checkpoint. Guards check. Are you allowed in here? Do you have the right permissions? Are you who you say you are? This checkpoint system is like the reference monitor in computer security. The reference monitor is a concept it's the idea of always checking access requests. It's like the ultimate security checkpoint that never sleeps, never takes bribes, and never looks away. The reference monitor has three key characteristics. It's tamper-proof, you can't bypass it or trick it. It's always invoked, every single access request goes through it. And it's small enough to be verified. We can actually check that it's working correctly. Now, here's something that often trips people up. The reference monitor isn't actual software or code. It's a concept, a theoretical model. It's the idea of always checking, not the actual implementation. So, if the reference monitor is just a concept, who's actually doing all that checking? That's where the security kernel comes in. The security kernel is like the actual guards at those castle checkpoints, along with their detailed rule books, it's the real implementation, the code or hardware that actually performs the access checks based on the rules. Just like castle guards need to follow specific procedures and checklists, the security kernel must satisfy three important principles. Completeness. This means the security kernel can't be bypassed. There are no back doors, no secret passages around it. Every single access request must go through it. Isolation. This means the rules the security kernel uses are tamper-proof. Only authorized people can change the rules, and even then, only through proper procedures. Verifiability. This means we can actually check that the security kernel is working correctly. It's like having audit logs and monitoring to ensure the guards are following their procedures properly. Now, let's connect all these pieces together. 
The reference monitor is the concept, the idea of always checking access requests. The security kernel is the implementation, the actual code or hardware doing the checking. And both of these live inside the TCB, the full set of trusted components that the system depends on for security. Think about it this way. If someone can sneak around the security kernel, the guards, then the reference monitor, the concept of checking, never gets to do its job. And if the TCB, the castle keep, is breached, then all bets are off. Nothing else in the system can keep you secure. This is why in secure system design, we try to keep the security kernel as tiny and simple as possible. It's much easier to check a small, simple system for mistakes than a large, complex one. And fewer mistakes means fewer chances for an attacker to slip through. Understanding these concepts isn't just about passing the CISSP exam. It's about understanding how secure systems are designed and why they work or fail. When you understand these concepts, you can look at a system and ask, where is the TCB? Is it properly protected? Is the reference monitor concept properly implemented through a security kernel? Does that security kernel satisfy the principles of completeness, isolation, and verifiability? This knowledge helps you identify potential security weaknesses and design better systems. It's the difference between memorizing terms for an exam and actually understanding how secure systems work. Let's look at some real-world examples to make this even more concrete. In your Windows computer, the security kernel is part of the operating system that manages access to files and resources. It's the actual code that checks if you're allowed to open that file or access that network resource. In a virtual machine environment like VMware or Hyper-V, the hypervisor is part of the TCB. It has to be trusted because if it's compromised, every virtual machine running on it is at risk. In mobile operating systems like iOS and Android, Security kernels enforce app sandboxing, making sure that apps can only access their own data and not other apps' data without permission. In cloud infrastructure, security kernels help ensure that different tenants' data stays isolated and secure. Now, let's talk about how this knowledge helps you with the CISSP exam. There's a common trap that catches many test takers, confusing the reference monitor with the security kernel. Remember this, the reference monitor is a concept. The security kernel is the implementation, the actual code or hardware. So if you get a question asking which one is a concept versus which one is code or hardware, you'll know exactly what to say. Also, don't confuse the security kernel with the system kernel. The system kernel is the core part of an operating system that manages resources while the security kernel is specifically about implementing the reference monitor concept. They're not the same thing. When you're analyzing exam scenarios, think in terms of the castle analogy. Ask yourself, am I being asked about the big set of trusted things, TCB, the always-on security checkpoint, reference monitor, or the code that makes it all happen? The security kernel. Let's wrap up with the key points. The TCB is like the castle keep, the totality of protection mechanisms that must be guarded at all costs. The reference monitor is like the security checkpoint, the concept of always checking access requests. The security kernel is like the guards and rulebooks, the actual implementation doing the checking. Understanding these connections transforms memorization into true comprehension. The castle analogy provides a memorable framework for analyzing security scenarios. Apply this layered thinking to practice questions and real-world security challenges. Remember, the goal isn't just to pass the exam, it's to truly understand these concepts so you can apply them in your career as a security professional. With this castle analogy in mind, you'll find that these abstract concepts become much more tangible and memorable. Good luck with your studies. You've got this.